this evening. Shortly after sunset, Mars and Venus. You're going to see that out to the west. And then towards morning, about 3 or 4 a.m., there's the moon. Saturn is up pretty high out to the southeast and rising on the eastern horizon, Jupiter. The climate indices show most of the indicators in the negative. This negative NAO pattern indicating a continuation of blocking and changeable weather in the northeastern U.S. PNA also negative, which is associated with troughing out in British Columbia and Washington. And, of course, we're heading into El Nino. Matt and Julian Oscillation is in Phase 2, associated with dry weather in the western U.S. The surface analysis this afternoon shows a strong cold front working into the Midwestern states and the central U.S. Some very cool temperatures out around Denver in Cheyenne. 56 at 3 p.m. in Cheyenne this afternoon and 55 at Sydney, Nebraska. And then, ironically, out in the mountains, we find much warmer conditions. 94 at Grand Junction, 82 along Interstate 70 there, and 87 at Alamosa. The dry line extending south from about Clayton, New Mexico, down to about Midland and the Big Bend. And we're starting to see some of that moisture making it into northern Mexico. And as that continues moving northward, that's going to bring an increase in monsoon conditions in New Mexico and Arizona. We're starting to get to that season. Usually in late July, that's when we see the monsoon head into Arizona. But right now, dew points are in the 20s and 30s. In the northeastern U.S., we've got that cold front extending through Lake Michigan, down through Illinois, and into Missouri. Out ahead of it, a mesoscale convective vortex moving through Illinois and along the leading edge in MCS. Scattered thunderstorms and showers from Ohio to New York this afternoon. And along the Atlantic coastal regions, scattered air mass storms as well from New York City down to Washington, D.C. Some very warm temperatures as well, 90 degrees in Ontario. 90 around Ottawa, and 80s all through the Atlantic Corridor, with dew points pretty high up into the mid-60s in Maine. In the southeastern U.S., plenty of rich tropical moisture. We find 70s dew points from the Carolinas down towards the Gulf Coast region. A 79-degree dew point at Houston Intercontinental Airport, and 73 at San Antonio. And there's the satellite imagery, numerous, numerous showers and storms, producing lots of anvils across the Carolinas and the Gulf Coast areas, and underneath outflow boundaries, and quite a few of them. And those are helping to regenerate new convection, such as out here in northern Arkansas. You can see a new tower right there west of Clinton, and some rather vigorous growth along that boundary. Let's take a quick look at that. Just kind of a random area to focus on. And that's that vigorous thunderstorm activity from north of Little Rock, north of Conway, out towards Blytheville, Arkansas. Stronger convection in the southern plains. We have a SPC slight risk extending from southwestern Kansas in southeastern Colorado up into the Pueblo and Colorado Springs area. And then further south along the Red River, US 287, another outflow boundary. You can see a distinct lack of low clouds north of that boundary, and just to the south, some convective cloud streets. There's the Amarillo radar showing a complex of storms out there around Wheeler, Texas, down towards Shamrock. And that is certainly putting out a healthy outflow boundary and other outflow boundaries extending further to the west. That's probably an older boundary. And convection as well from Trinidad down towards Las Vegas, New Mexico. We can take it back to yesterday afternoon to see some of that convection, just weak stuff up there around Sioux City, Iowa. This is yesterday about midday. And as we go through the afternoon, 
numerous storms in eastern Colorado, northwestern Kansas, and those form up into an MCS from around Garden City all the way up to Omaha and southwest of Minneapolis. Then going to about 11 p.m., 12 a.m., a strong MCS in eastern Kansas moving southeast into the Ozarks, and that leaves us with a mesoscale convective vortex right in this area here in western Illinois earlier. And that brings us up to the current time. So we've got a large post-frontal air mass. Remember, the front is in this area right here. Back behind it, a drier air mass with elevated stratocumulus and cumulus. A little bit showery up there in northern Minnesota. And then we get into upslope clouds, stratocumulus, stratus, that kind of thing right there in western Nebraska and eastern Colorado. The flow originating from a high-pressure area somewhere up there in the Dakotas, coming around to easterly flow. And that easterly flow moves upslope into higher terrain. You get that adiabatic cooling, humidification of the air mass, and eventually saturation. Last night, yeah, a lot of rain back in this area. We had totals up to 2.08 inches in Vermilion, South Dakota. Huron reported 1.39 and Sioux City 1.16, and they are in a drought, and they need every bit that they can get. And there's a look at those temperatures in northeastern Colorado at uh, about 5.30 p.m. mountain time. 50s, yep, there in Fort Collins up to Cheyenne, 55 there, 55 at Sydney. So yeah, it's a little pocket of very cool air. In the southwestern U.S., that's where we find the heat. 110 degrees at Gila Bend, 107 at Blythe, and 106 in Tucson. And we've got hundreds as well throughout southern New Mexico, 106 at the Sour at El Paso. Most of the clouds are on the higher elevations in the Rockies, especially around the Front Range. Not much of anything back in the Four Corners area or in the southwestern deserts. Looks like wildfires are starting to get going. That's probably just west of Prescott. And out there around Sholo, looks like smoke as well. And we do have some viewers in that region. Heat as well up in the northwestern U.S. This afternoon, that's focused around Medford with 99 degrees. But over the 4th of July weekend, a lot of the interior region got heat. And the National Weather Service in Boise, Idaho had a snake come into the office and that caused some temporary alarm. They identified it as a gopher snake. And true to the spirit of science, they did a measurement and found it was 45 inches long. And they are definitely to the west of that front that's hung up there in the Rockies. Temperatures on the other side of that in the 80s and 90s. Heading up north into British Columbia, still some 90s and 80s all the way up towards Prince George. Moving north into Alaska, not much going on. They do have a red flag warning in the Tanana Valley and the eastern Alaskan range. In Canada, yeah, there's definitely been some news in that region. Inuvik, Northwest Territory, is located right there. They were up to 91 degrees yesterday, and that reached their all-time highest temperature. Records go back to 1957. The previous record was in 1999 and 2002. And even out east, records were set in Quebec, in this region right here. La Grande Riviere was up to 94 degrees, 34.4 Celsius. Shefferville was 29 Celsius, or 84 Fahrenheit. And even along the Hudson Bay region right there, Kujarapik, Great Whale River, 94 degrees yesterday. Fortunately, they've had a cool down, 63 this afternoon. And some cool weather in Saskatchewan. Moose Jaw recorded 36 this morning and 39 degrees at North Battleford. So the heat is not quite everywhere. Some big storms moving along this front into the interior region of Quebec, I seriously doubt there's any storm chasers in that region, but you can see those temperatures out ahead of it well up into the 80s and even 90 degrees up there north of Quebec City. 
And just a very quick check on our friends in Europe. It is about midnight, and I'm pleased to see lots of 50s. So it does not look like a big heat wave. The warmer temperatures found down there in the Mediterranean. And yeah, you can see the lack of data in Ukraine. They are reporting synoptic data, I believe, but the METAR data is out of service. And it's been that way for over a year. The National Weather Service uses the AWIPS workstation, as pictured here at Morristown, Tennessee, and we do as well. So let's dive right in on those graphics. Here's the 250 millibar chart up there at jet stream level at about 34,000 feet, and there it is, jet stream running right up through western Quebec and helping to support those thunderstorms. Another segment of the jet coming on shore around San Francisco, moving across Denver, and, of course, the frontal zone is along the warm side of that jet axis. And let's see how things evolve over the next several days. Not much change until we get to about Sunday or Monday. You can see some ridging, strong ridging, developing out there on the west coast. So this may carry it a little bit more into a P&A type pattern. And you can see the strong northwesterly flow. If the, you know, if this was December or January there'll probably be some strong cold air coming down into the Midwest region. And what we see going into next week, just kind of a continuation of this pattern. To really look at the subtropics, we should drop down to about 500 millibars. And here we can see the subtropical ridge covering southern Arizona, southern New Mexico. No wonder the heat is laying onto that area, the upper level high located right there around Deming, New Mexico. Westerly flow to the north of that. Then going into the weekend, very similar picture. The high remaining parked right there over southern New Mexico. A couple waves moving through the flow here and there, depending on where you are, up north. And all the way through 240 hours, a very similar picture. So not much to look at over the next couple of weeks, but the tropics is getting active. Maybe not today, maybe not this week, but we are heading into that season for sure. One thing we are going to be watching is Saharan dust. Now, this is aerosol optical depth. We've got Africa right there, South America, Central America, and the U.S. So right in here, you can see all this dust coming off the coast of Senegal. This is on the 1st, and then we go forward to July 2nd and then third, and then fourth, and then fifth. So right now the dust appears to be around Puerto Rico, and we'll probably be bringing that into maybe Texas and Louisiana later in the weekend. And it looks like another patch may be on the way after that. All right, we are running a little bit late this evening, so I need to get this rendered and uploaded. I want to thank our newest patron, Ginger. Thank you very much for your support. And we'll see everybody back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.